Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India's Home Minister Amit Shah reviews security ahead of T20 meetings in Kashmir. Taliban aim to boost Afghan security forces, anti-aircraft capacity, says Army Chief. And bittersweet New Year for traditional sweetmeat makers in Sri Lanka. And now for all the details, India is all set to hold G20 summit meetings under its presidency in German Kashmir in late May, a decision which has left Pakistan fuming. India's Home Minister Amit Shah reviewed the security situation in the Union territory in this regard on Thursday. India has been hosting delegates of the elite grouping across the length and breadth of the country. Pakistan's foreign ministry on Tuesday called the move as irresponsible and a self-serving measure. New Delhi has long accused Pakistan of spreading unrest in Kashmir Valley by aiding terror groups, a charge Islamabad denies. Earlier, China had also expressed objections over the G20 meetings to be held in the territory of Ladakh in late April, exactly three years after border row erupted between the two countries in the region. And India's Financial Crime Fighting Agency, ED, the Enforcement Directorate, has opened an investigation into alleged violations of foreign exchange rules by the BBC. The investigation comes months after tax authorities searched the British broadcasters' offices in Mumbai and New Delhi. The latest investigation is being conducted under India's Foreign Exchange Management Act. British Foreign Minister James Cleverly had in March raised the BBC tax searches with his Indian counterpart. Relations between India and Britain, who are working to seal a delayed free trade agreement, have also been strained by protest outside the Indian High Commission in London last month. Well, Pakistan's Supreme Court has warned a PM Shehbaz Sharif-led ruling coalition that failure to comply with direction regarding the release of 21 billion Pakistan rupees election fund will amount to disobedience of the apex court. The top court also ordered senior officials, including Governor of State Bank of Pakistan, Attorney General Finance Secretary, along with Election Commission of Pakistan representatives, to appear before it on Friday. This comes as the poll body on Tuesday submitted a report stating that the federal government had not provided funds for the polls to be held on May 14th in Punjab province as per the court's order. The ruling coalition has stressed to holding the elections is not in nation's interest amid the economic crisis. And tailors in crisis at Pakistan have expressed that they are unable to make ends meet due to rising cost and low purchasing power of the customers. The ongoing Ramadan is a time for business, but everyone is feeling the pinch of the crippling economic slowdown. A report. Tailors across Muslim-majority Pakistan usually do more than half of their total annual business during the holy month of Ramadan. But this time, the worsening economic crisis has also affected them severely. A tailor in financial capital Karachi said the rising prices of material they use and low purchasing power of customers has made it difficult for them to manage expenses. महंगाई ने बिल्कुल तो कमर तोड़ दी हर बंदे की समझे ना हम सिलाई मांगते हैं ग्राहक भाग जाता है तो जब कपड़े सिलाएगा बेचारा या आटा लेगा समझे ना इसी कश्मकश में हम बैठे हुए हैं और हमारे अपने घर के गुजारे नहीं हो रहे हकीकत बात ये हमारा बोलते हैं सीजन है रमजान सीजन है रमजान सीजन नहीं है रमजान का इतना खर्चा है जो हम अपने दुकान का खर्चा नहीं निकाल पा ये नलकी है धागे की ये चार रुपए की मिलती थी और अब ये नलकी बीस रुपए की एक मिल रही है इतना सिलक बुकरम पाकेट कलाद धागा बटन ये तमाम की तमाम चीजें जो है इतनी महंगी हो गई है की हमारे ऊपर बहुत ज्यादा बर्डन पड़ गया Prices have been pushed higher by a weakening currency, energy tariff increases and a usual Ramadan spike. Global factors have also compounded consumer inflation as the country of 220 million people tries to finalize a 1.1 billion US dollars bailout agreement with IMF.
The Taliban's army chief, Karif Asihuddin Fitrat, has said that defense has received the largest share of funds in Afghanistan's budget as the Taliban government aims to boost forces by a third and built anti-aircraft missile capacity. The defense ambitions of the Taliban, which took over in 2021, comes in the face of its policies, such as restrictions on work and education for women, that have hampered steps towards diplomatic recognition. Fitrat said defense forces now numbering 150,000 are targeted to be increased by 50,000, although he did not reveal the precise figure of the funds. We have a lot of money for two years ago. We have a lot of money for 150,000 people. We have a lot of Islamic countries in the United States. اما این هدف هدف نهایی نیست آهسته آهسته قدم به قدم پیش میریم تا ای که ما اطمینان پیدا بکنیم که حالا تمام این نیازمندی های کشوری ما در راستای داشتن یک اردوی منظم و since the takeover, the Taliban have spent one and a half years setting up a civilian administration and a national military out of an insurgent force that fought a 20-year war against foreign forces and the previous U.S.-backed Afghan government. And as Sri Lanka is suffering from its worst economic crisis, vendors in the island nation fear that their businesses may not be so brisk and won't be able to buy food and new items to celebrate their traditional New Year. A report. Sweet meats are a popular food during the Sri Lankan New Year, which will be celebrated on Friday. But this year, vendors fear that business may not be so brisk as the country grapples with its worst economic crisis in decades. Priyanti Anumuva, who runs a small traditional sweet meat business, said that whatever profit she makes is being offset by higher input cost. Customers affected by an economy in turmoil have tightened their belts and that means her profit margins don't even provide enough to pay the bills. Oh, then Sri Lanka last month secured a $2.9 billion program from the IMF to tackle its suffocating debt burden. The economic crisis has disrupted imports of essentials from fuel to medicine and caused political turmoil. And India's Jammu and Kashmir has turned into a mini paradise as almond trees have bloomed in white and pink amid the pleasant spring season. Almond trees, which are among the first to bloom in the Kashmir Valley, have lent an aromatic air to the spring. Tourists who visited the famous gardens in the region said that they were overwhelmed with Kashmir's beauty. It is known as a king of the seasons in Kashmir, which is the spring season. So, the trees are on the side of the side of the side. And the people who come out of hibernation, which are in the winters, in the dry months, harsh winters, there are also stands still in some activities. The tourism activity is for the year of the year. Known for its snow-topped Himalayan mountains, fast-flowing rivers, Mukaleda Gardens, Alpine Meadows and houseboats, the federal territory has seen a resurgence in domestic tourism since most COVID-19 restrictions ended last year. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.